Hey guys, my name is Justina Ireland and I am here to talk to you today about the five things, biggest misconceptions surrounding black women or black people in general. Um, when you're writing characters outside of your experience, a lot of times we tend to take those stereotypes, those kind of things we believe in the back of our mind even if we're not consciously thinking them, and they make their way into our story. So here's five really big ones that if they end up in your story or you kind of say them out loud, people are going to give you kind of a little bit of side eye. So let's get started. The loud stereotype actually comes from these caricatures that used to be used in black minstrelsy back in the 19th century. You know, there was a Sambo character and then there was um, the Jezebel character who's kind of sexy. Um, these were Blackface characters, white people would put stuff on their face um, that kind of represented like these, this mockery of black people. And that kind of carried through in the entertainment industry until a show in the 1930s or 40s called Amos Andy. It was a radio show, and on the show, one of the characters was always being kind of berated by his wife. And she was this loud, kind of angry, strident character. Um, and so a lot of that, that criticism of tone and looking at women, black women as this like very angry um, part of the black community came from the Amos and Andy. Plus, during the Civil Rights Movement, it was really easy to tell somebody, hey, you're just angry, you're just unreasonable, because you can't argue with an angry person, you can't, you know, debate reasonably with an unreasonable person. So if black people fighting for equality, especially black women, were just angry and unreasonable, you don't have to listen to them. If you do have a black character and they are angry, make that anger justified. You know, and analyze why they could be angry. But in general, black people are just as angry as white people are. Number two um, biggest misconception about black people is that black people tend to be these naturally great, graceful dancers. Um, and a lot of this is because in the past and in general, Entertainment was done by black folks. Um, it's one of those things where black people could, you know, excel and make a, a decent living. Um, so this idea that black people are really great dancers is really not true because I cannot dance to save my life. And let me tell you, high school would have been a much, much easier time of my life if I could have been, you know, like some sort of like awesome break dancer. Third biggest misconception about black people, and one that we see pretty much on a daily basis, especially if you're watching certain news channels, is that black people just want a handout. Look, there are lazy white people, and there are lazy black people. There are lazy people across all ends of the spectrum. There are people who genuinely need help, public assistance, and there are people who maybe take advantage of it. But to categorize black people as just being lazy, that's one of those things, those in forms of institutional control that's kind of persisted because, well, I mean, if you're just lazy, maybe that's why you're oppressed. The fourth biggest misconception about black people and that seems to really kind of seep into the stories and TV shows um, I see is that all black people live in the inner city. And it's usually some um, part of New York or LA or an unnamed inner city in some like city, like just general the city. Um, and this isn't true. I, I mean, there are a lot of black people who live in the city. There are a lot of black people who live in the middle of the country and n n not close to anything, especially when you're talking about the rural South. Um, try to like kind of play with that. If you're, you know, if you have characters, they don't always have to live in, you know, the place you think they would live. Um, I would say, you know, the suburbs are pretty diverse. And in, in fact, if you're writing a book, you know, set in a high school in, in the suburbs and you don't have any black people, that's probably a bigger oversight. Um, there's probably, you know, black people are everywhere, which, you know, depending on what your perspective is on that, could be good or bad. And the fifth biggest um, stereotype or misconception I read, read about black people is that, you know, we all listen to rap music. I enjoy rap music. It's not my primary source of listening material and it's not really the kind of the second or third thing I turn to when I'm ready to listen to music. And a lot of the people I know who are also happen to be black don't really listen to much rap any, either. Don't really listen to much rap either. A lot of white people I know listen to rap. 
So don't always make your um your char your black character you know kind of this like gangster you know inner city rap dude um, because it's really kind of a tired trope you know make her a ballerina or you know make her an honor student you know put your character somewhere where you wouldn't expect to see them because of the stereotypes and if you do make your black character you know an inner city kind of gangster really big into rap give them some depth you know make it about more than that the, really the biggest thing about using stereotypes is that they lack depth, they lack thought. So if you're going to use them, you got to really work to make sure that they're not stereotypes, that they mean something more, something deeper. That's all I have. Hey, hopefully we'll have some more videos for you soon. Definitely check out um, the other stuff folks are doing, a lot of different perspectives on uh, issues, and um, I hope to see you guys back. Bye!